Here is a second well-known and counterintuitive uh, probability problem. It is, what is the probability that two or more of us have the same birthday? Now, I typically do this in a classroom setting, and I'll count the number of people that are in the room. But in this particular case, what I'll do is I will just go ahead and assume that there are 23 people in the room. And once you have that assumption in place, you can just think about this a little bit. What would the probability of two or more, in other words, what's the probability that there's a match two people were born on the same day? You know, sometimes when you see this problem, people will guess at 23 divided by 365, but they tend to say it's not very likely with just 23 people in the room that you would have a match between the birthdays. Now to conceptualize this a little bit more, I'm going to draw over here an urn. And urns are used quite a bit in probability. I'm going to put a bunch of balls in this urn. And I'm going to have ball number 1, 2, and 3 all the way up to ball number 365. And these represent the possible birthdays. So by doing that, I am already ignoring leap year. I'm going to assume that that's a bit of complication that I don't want to get into. That would significantly complicate the uh, um, calculation of this probability. Every time I need a, a birthday, I'm going to pull a ball out of this urn. If it happens to be ball 17, that's January 17th. If it happens to be ball 365, that's December 31st. So when I do this, I am also making the assumption that all birthdays are equally likely. That is not true in practice. There are slight differences between all of them. But to work the problem, it will make um, the mathematics a little bit easier. So we're going to make that assumption. So what we're after in this case is we are after the probability that two or more people have the same birthday. And one trick that you're going to find very, very early in probability is you're going to see that this is the same as 1 minus the probability that all of the people in the room have different birthdays. Much easier problem to solve. Now, here is where the sampling from the urn comes in. We'll get to the details a little bit later. But in the denominator, you put in all of the different ways you can pull 23 balls out of that urn when you're assuming that they are drawn with replacement. So on the first draw, there's 365 possibilities. And then what happens is you put that ball back in the urn, and on the second draw, there are 365 possibilities. Same for the third draw all the way down to the 23rd draw. So in the denominator here, we have 365 raised to the 23rd power. Now in the numerator, what you want to do is you want to put in all of the possibilities that are associated with everybody pulling out a different ball. So on the first draw, there's 365 possibilities. But on the second draw, to correspond to having different values, you put a 364 in there because you're not allowed to pull that first ball that you pulled out. And then on the next draw, there's 363 possibilities. You can't get either of these first two draws. And this goes on for 23 draws. So the last one here will be 365 minus 23 plus 1 is going to give you 343. Well, when you work that out, this turns out to be just slightly above 1 half. And most people find that very, very counterintuitive. They thought that probability would be much lower.